celebrating 15 years of Young Turks. Welcome back. You're watching this Young Turks special and we're in conversation with Raman Roy, Padmant Arru Parel and Saurabh Srivastav talking about the new Indian Angel Network Fund. The whole entrepreneurial ecosystem in India is just getting started. Mm. When people say, you know, is it burst, is sort of coming apart, yeah. it's just getting started. We have the opportunity and we'd, what one would like to do is to see some of the greatest companies in India emerge from this table. Mm. And to do this, what we're trying to create is, let's say, the single largest home in mm. India where we can say, listen, you can walk in when you need 50 lakhs. And so long as you're doing well, you can stay here till you need 50 crores. Mm. We'll handhold you, we'll, we'll get you ready for the mm. world before you uh, ship out. Okay. And if this model works, and if we make a huge success of it, as we hope we do, then a lot of other angel groups and funds will do this. Mm. And yes, they'll compete with us, but... Mm. In this country, that should not be an issue. But yes. what it will yeah. do yeah. is if we can put three, four thousand crores mm. at play in ten years, which we intend mm. to, and three other angel groups do that, we'll write the inverted pyramid. I mean, if you look at the U.S., in a typical year, VCs put twenty-five billion dollars mm. in five thousand companies. Mm. Angels put twenty-six billion dollars in fifty thousand companies. One in ten survives needs 10 times the money. They have this pyramid. Mm. We have this pyramid. Mm. What we're trying to do is fix it. Mm. So, uh, it, just in terms of being able to raise the funds, has a significant amount of money also come in from family offices, etc.? Yes, it has. We've got institutional money and family offices and a lot of members of, of IAN. And it's the kind of money we want. We want people who will also add some value, mm. not just write mm. a, a, a mm. check. We've got very good quality money. And Overseas contribution? Yes. Yes, but the best part is that we've done a first clause largely on domestic mm. and everybody says you can't raise money domestically in India. 85% of VC money in India comes from overseas. overseas yeah. And we've done our clause which is half the fund on domestic. Now we go raise most of the institutional money overseas. We have some, but now we raise it overseas. Perhaps we could also uh, take some lessons from the experience that you may have had with Tezela. And we've seen that unfortunate incident uh, play out. Uh, Patanjo, what has been the key learning there as far as the Tezela story is concerned? And, and do you fear that we're going to see a lot more of this? Because we're already seeing cases being filed against companies and entrepreneurs for not being able to pay dues and so on and so forth. So, you know, one of the learnings, there were two learnings actually. Uh, one learning is really from an entrepreneur perspective, right? How fast should you grow? Because, uh, you know, initial days, every, every company, every startup is bootstrapped. And therefore, you build some disciplines of bootstrapping, capital efficiency, how you spend, all of that. And uh, it's very easy at times to, when you raise the next round, when you raise larger sums, to say, okay, why don't we do this and this and this? Because it will help us grow. So I think that that growth path, how fast you grow, how you spend, is very important. Mm. And I think losing sight of that is not really going to help in the long run. That's one. The second is from the ecosystem perspective itself, which probably uh, is... This, to my mind, was a civil case. And as an ecosystem, as a country, mm -hmm. as our judicial process, I think it's very important uh, to differentiate between civil and criminal. And I'm not referring to Stazilla itself. It may have its own, uh, you know, its own unique case, yeah. which I'm not very aware of. But I think if it's a civil case, then it has to go through the, you know, the process of law. That mm. it's a civil process of mm. law. I'm an investor in Stazilla. I can burst into tears and say, look, there went my money. So we offer to some of the Indian Angel Network investors a part divesture at a double digit in terms of number of times mm. that their investment multiplied. And the founder spoke to me and said I should stay on. So I divested half of it. But what happened there, the new investor coming in had a GMV focus made the management move to the GMB focus and the management since then gave a statement to say I forgot to look at my cash flows, mm. I mm. forgot to look at. There were IAN representatives on the board who were bringing out that different focus. So I think there is one aspect of big learning mm. 
to you know ultimately the entrepreneur will decide we may sit on the board and we may disagree or we may have views to be able to present a viewpoint so that uh, educated decision can be taken mm, yeah so stazella is a pity i'll tell you because this is a company that should have done very well yeah, yeah. Logi was so it was doing very well it had a great entrepreneur we love the company and uh, but this is a company that should have done well it would mm. have been good for the country this space they were mm. in was it just ahead of the curve they were but slightly ahead of the curve but they got pushed by uh, the, the investors mm. they were pushed too far ahead of the curve and the thing is they you, when you're growing it's fine you can make losses and they can be planned but you mustn't lose sight of your unit economics you mm. must know how mm. you will make mm. money and and the second thing is you know even in the us everywhere in the world nine out of 10 startups will fail, fail. Yeah. and if all of them are going to end up in jail mm. there will be no startup ecosystem mm. in the world mm. so we have to fix that mm. it's one is a law issue chapter 11 type thing make it easy yeah the second is implementation mm. i mean the judicial system should not accept what they did the stays in a case you have chit fund scam guys who are out roaming on bail mm. and this poor fellow and they have thousands of crores this poor fellows on the civil cases in jail so mm. it's a judicial system is also at fault also to the entrepreneur community i think the last couple of years have brought down to say that i need to look at uh, what my business model is a little more granular mm. and if you look at it you know as sort of said we meet about 9000 companies i see a map change in which way people are bringing out their business model mm. the way they are able to answer the questions because they have given it far more diligence mm. to that piece the thing that has also happened which has worked out good for the ecosystem is companies have now started looking at their governance the internal audits the statutory discipline Absolutely. and that's very good mm. because and that's the that is the market mar- maturing, maturing. Yeah, yeah. initially we would say that when we had a workshop on ui ux we'd have more people now we have more people coming when we're talking about gst when we're talking about yeah. audits yeah. Yeah. when we're talking about setting up company yeah. Uh, structure so there is been that slight shift which is very good sure so let me get uh, wrap up comments uh, ram let me start by asking you what is it that you would like to achieve with the fund uh, give me a sense of what is going to be the outlook over the next few years with the fund i think some companies that had a potential to become winners faced a high mortality because series a was not available or pre series a was uh, not available and uh, a lot of the angels uh, saw the potential because everything was pointing in the right direction mm. but the inability to raise that fund we hope to be able to bridge that gap the pre series a or series a gap that allows the companies to come to their level of maturity but major uh, aspiration for the fund over the next few so- years I think what I would like this to become is really become a paradigm shift in the startup ecosystem become the largest horizontal platform for seed and early stage investing we've seen 40% IRR or above in IEN and I think apart from creating the companies good companies that um, uh, Raman spoke about I think I would be really really delighted if we can return excellent money returns to the investors yeah i think then we would have created in some ways a india as the place for early stage investing that's what i would like to see this is also a show about getting entrepreneurs uh, who are watching uh, to say well you know uh, these guys are sitting here uh, they they've been able to achieve what they've been able to achieve in life and maybe you can share some lessons with them what's the the, the big mistake that you made if you could go back in time and and do it over <laughs> what would it be so i'll tell you the first thing When I did my first startup, I was running the Tata Unisys JV, which at that time was one third of the Indian software industry. Eleven uh. overseas offices, operating in forty countries. I thought I knew everything. Mm. What did was you realize you didn't? Then I did the startup. In one year, I understood all that I didn't know. So, big, big earning learning session. The second big mistake. We said in the first year everybody makes a loss. so we didn't hurry too much with our permissions for uh, tax exemption and all the rest uh. we made a profit but 
because we didn't understand the difference between cash flow and profit and loss. We uh. didn't hire a CFO. Uh. Me and my partner said, you know, what's a big deal? Very few transactions. Why spend the money? We made a profit. We had to pay taxes. But we didn't have the cash to pay taxes uh. because we'd spent it. So hire a CFO. <laughs> so don't scrimp on hiring the best professionals yeah. in every discipline. Don't think you know no, everything. Yeah. In fact, the big learning, if I get an entrepreneur who says he knows everything, mm. or she knows everything, doesn't need anybody else, doesn't matter if I think they have the next thing after sliced bread, I'm not going to touch them. Okay. Well, I wish you the very best of luck with, uh, with the new fund. And thank you very much for sharing the Indian Angel Network story with us. And we hope that, uh, that, that I, I can maybe find a home as well, Lene, <laughs> that you're offering to entrepreneurs on the table here. But thanks very much, Saurabh Padmaja and Raman Roy for joining us here on this Young Turk special. For now, from all of us here, goodbye. Many thanks for watching. But stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. We've got a lot more coming up. Celebrating 15 years of Young Turks.